Hi guys and welcome back to Top Speed Golf. I want to thank Comb for being nice enough to send in his swing for us to take a look at. We're going to talk about a couple of things that he was concerned about and how to properly shift your weight to the left to get that good forward shaft lean. And really it all boils down to hitting the ball dead solid. We're going to go up some some good go over some good keys that are going to help you to do that. Let's go and get started. All right, so to start off here, let's talk about a couple of things that he does really well. I really like his swing. He's got a very nice, very solid swing. A lot of things happening very well. Uh, we'll notice that his setup position, he gets some nice spine tilt here, and this is what we call the stable fluid spine. And the reason we call it the stable fluid spine is because throughout the swing, we want that spine angle to remain pretty constant. So we'll see at the top of the swing, we can see his spine angle very, very similar to what it was at address is the overall spine angle. I realize there is some curvature in the spine, but the overall tilt is very similar to what it is at address, but it was also fluid because it allowed him to get a good full shoulder turn, which is the what we call the power turn in the golf swing. So we went from address, we went to the top of the swing, spine angle very, very consistent, good shoulder turn going back. And if we go down to the bottom of the swing to impact, we're going to see that that spine angle is still also very, very consistent as he came through the shot. It's going to increase a little bit, but notice how nice and consistent that is. And then even all the way into the, the finish, we're going to see that that doesn't move around a lot. So if we look at his overall spine angle there at the finish, very, very nice there too. So he's very, very consistent in that. I love that. That is one of the, the key points, and I think the really the most important fundamental for consistency which is a question that I get a lot, how can I be more consistent? Well, he's demonstrating that uh, very well. Also with the power turn that we go over in the top speed golf system, notice how his belt buckle and the finish is facing toward the target. And notice how his shoulders have rotated all the way on through. So they're even facing a little bit toward the left rough. A good key for this and, and thing that, that can't be overemphasized enough is to make sure that all your weight is balanced over your left side. So if we drew a line up through the, the left ankle all the way through the top of the head, we're gonna see that that's nice and balanced, one nice straight line. And his right toe has come all the way up off the ground to allow his hips and allow his body to rotate through there. One of the things that I see a lot are people keeping, instead of the, the right foot looking like this, the right foot is still at an angle. Too much weight is down into the ground on the right foot, and that's causing you to keep weight on your right side that limits the hip rotation and the shoulder rotation and ultimately cuts down in a lot of your distance so that's what i really like nice consistent stable fluid spine and a good turn going both back and through one of the things that he mentioned in his downswing that he didn't like and had some concerns on is as he's shifting to the left you'll notice how the upper body starts to move a little bit um, kind of exaggerated to the left as he starts the downswing. He says, you know, I feel like that's contributing to me getting a little bit over the top, and I feel like that's contributing to me losing a little bit of lag as he's coming through. So we'll notice here, he's got a little bit of a lag, not a bad casting motion or anything like that. Has decent amount of lag here, but he's just losing that a little bit early, and he's releasing the club a little bit early. So those are the two, several things that we talk about in the top speed golf system where we want to be maxing out lag here and then not releasing that until well out in front. And you can see that when he gets about 45 past, this is a little before that, but instead of the club splitting the forearms, so the club should still be back at this angle when he's releasing, it's actually going past that and he's releasing that a little too early. So that cuts down on his forward shaft lean at, at contact, we can see he's losing that a little bit early. So that was very interesting and, and something that, I, that I've seen It's very similar to what Jordan Spieth does. So if we look at the first move down, as he mentioned, the upper body's going a little bit to the left. We're also gonna see something very similar when we look at Jordan Spieth. Notice how his upper body and his lower body are shifting to the left together. And I don't think that's a bad thing at all. Um, that's actually a, a, a nice thing to do is to shift the upper and lower body together. What, one thing that I see people doing a lot of times when they're trying to work on the weight shift is to really throw this left hip out in front. And I think we've all been told, you know, bump the hips to the left, get the left hip going, you know, uh, significantly to start the downswing. And often what that can do is the, to lead you into a, a bad position at contact. And when we come down to contact here, let's take a look at, at Jordan we're gonna notice that his hip isn't racing out in front of his left shoulder. So if we take a look at 
the left shoulder, the left hip socket, and the left ankle socket, we're going to see that these are all pretty stacked on top of each other. This is what I call the compression line when we're in the top speed golf system. And we can see that's very slightly tilted away from the target. That's what we'd like to have. Ideally, you know, if we're hitting a long iron or a driver, we're going to be about five or six degrees tilted away from the target. And we don't want to get this hip way out here in front. If the hip was popped out here in front of this line, and instead of being a straight line, it looked more like a V type shape, you'd start to get a lot of pain in your left hip. If you ever feel like you're sore after a round of golf and your left hip is, is bothering you a little bit, that could be what's happening. So I actually like that shift to the left, and I, I think that's completely fine. If I look at, at his compression line as you're coming through the impact here, very nice. I like this a lot. So the left ankle, left hip, left shoulder are all pretty stacked up there and slightly tilted away from the target. So I don't think that's really the root of the issue here. What we're seeing with that, that kind of exaggerated bump to the left is more of a backswing issue. So if we go back to the beginning of the swing, let's go ahead and draw a line up from the center of the ankle. And we're going to see as he goes to the top of the swing, he's just shifting a little too far to the right. So if we go all the way to the top. Notice how his head starts to poke through that line. And as he gets all the way up here, we can see that, that his nose is all the way over the center of his right shoe. And the outside of his head is all the way outside of his right foot. So that's going to lead to a little bit of a sway or feeling like a sway. And now to get back to that good compression line, to get back to that good position at contact, he's going to have to bump to the left a little bit exaggerated with the upper body. So it looks a little smaller, not as noticeable when Jordan's doing that because when he gets to the top of the swing, he hasn't shifted as far to the right. So even though his spine angle is very very similar to what we're seeing with Calm, very tilted away, both of them have good spine angles. If we draw a line up from the center of the shoe with Jordan, we're going to see that that's still outside of, of his uh of his, the center of his right foot as he goes to the top. So what I would recommend for you here to work on, get that stance a little bit wider. This is this is a little too narrow. Get the stance a little bit wider. So if the center, center of your ankle is here, go ahead and widen that up a couple inches. And what that's going to do is now you're going to feel like it's easier to put weight on the inside of your right foot as you're going back instead of all the way to the outside of the right foot, which is more what we're seeing here. And I want you to feel like you you keep your head inside your right ankle. So if you're drawing a, line, a vertical line up, feel like your nose is staying on the inside of that line as you're going back. Make sure you still keep this good spine tilt. We just don't want as much of a lateral sway as we're coming back. And then as you start down, that's going to make it easier to get to that good compression line, to get to that good impact line as, you, as you're starting the downswing without having to feel like you move around a lot. So that's the main thing that I'd say for those of you who feel like maybe you sway a little bit in the swing and start to move ladder a little bit too, laterally a little too much, make sure you feel like that pressure is on the inside of the right ankle as you're going back and then your nose is over top of that as you're making the top of your backswing. And getting a little bit wider stance is going to make that easier. Now the main thing that I want you to work on in the downswing to really get a lot more compression to release that club a little bit better, get some more forward shaft lean, is the hips. So if we pause just before impact here, notice how the hips are still very square to the ball. So if your, your belt buckle would be facing just in front of this golf ball, we got to get these hips open a little bit more. If we go ahead and look at Jordan Spieth again, again, you guys have very, very similar motions, but let's take a look at the differences in the hips. And we'll go ahead and pause at about the same position. See if we can hit the exact same one here. I think the camera is going to be moving too fast. This is pretty similar though. Notice how his belt buckle is much more open. His belt buckle is almost that 45 degrees in front, which is what we call the straight line release. And that's allowing him to get in the proper position with the hips to get the forward shaft lean. So if we go one more frame ahead, we're going to see how you've lost a lot of your forward shaft lean. That's causing you to lose compression, lose stability in the club as you're coming through there. That's mostly the hips. And we'll see where, where the next frame is here with Jordan to see if we can get a similar position. Yeah, so see how his hands are in the exact same position your hands are in here, but he's still retained, uh, not retained, he still has um, a releasing of the club, but he's still got more forward shaft lean, probably a, a good 10, 10 or 12 degrees more than what you're seeing there. That's almost 100% hips related 
what I want you to do is go ahead and stand up in your living room and I want you to open up your hips about 45 degrees and notice how now you can get more forward shaft lean on the golf ball and, and a better compression compression position and more uh, uh, de-lofting of the golf club as you're coming through there. That's going to be a lot easier as you're coming through contact. I recommend working on that about 100 times, pausing at impact, hips 45 degrees open, and instead of your hands being here and the club being out in front, I want to see that club angled back about like this, like we see with Jordan, to really feel that good compression uh, through, through impact and really de-lofting the club. And if you do that, it's a lot easier with the hips open. Now, one last thing here before we leave that's very, very important. A lot of times when people try to open the hips more, they think of, I'm going to race and open the hips more aggressively, or I'm going to rotate the hips faster. I don't want you to rotate the hips any faster. I just want them to continue to open up as you're coming down. So don't think about the hips racing open at all. Think about the hips opening more so that we're not controlling the speed of them. We're just not slowing them down so that they can still continue through there. And that's going to help you to get in a better uh, impact position. Make sure as you're doing this, you're still hitting a little bit on the inside of the golf ball, hitting a nice draw, releasing the face, that kind of thing. We don't want to start to come over the top, as I know you mentioned sometimes you have a, a bit of a habit of doing. But overall, great swing. Stay a little bit more stable in the back swing. Keep some pressure on the inside of the right foot. And as you're coming to contact, get those hips a little bit more open. That's going to allow you to get more forward shaft lean, and you're going to do great. So good luck to you guys out there. Good luck. Work hard. I'll talk to you soon. All right, so I got a great bonus for you guys that are tuning in on YouTube. I have a lag video that's going to pop up here in a second. You can watch that full video absolutely free of charge. It's going to show you how to create more lag in your downswing so you can boost your club head speed. Plus, we're going to go over and give you the five videos that go over the top speed golf system. So there's five very important moves. If you want to play great golf, if you want to be consistent, we got to have the power turn. We got to use the hips correctly. We got to get good forward shaft lean and lag and release the club correctly. I'm going to go over the entire top speed golf system. You're going to get a great introduction to that and some really good drills. Go ahead and click the link that pops up on your screen or down below in the description. You'll get all that free of charge. Plus, click the subscribe button so you'll see our latest, greatest videos, including Swing Speed Saturdays. And also hit the like button. Post any comments below if you have any questions. Good luck to you guys. I'll see you all soon. Hi guys and welcome back. I'm Clay Ballard and in today's video we're going to talk about one of the absolute worst drills for creating lag. It's a very common drill that I see and in this drill what we're going to do is we're going to set the wrist very early to create an angle of lag and then we're going to try to hold this throughout the swing. It's one of the worst things that you can, that you can do to build lag. I'm going to talk about the science behind why this is the case and I'm also going to give you a great drill to help you improve your lag all in this video. Let's go ahead and get if started. I do it this way versus holding that position. Exact same thing happens when we're building lag in the golf swing. So what we want to do is throughout the swing, I want to have a very low and wide takeaway. So I'm not going to set my wrist early at all. If you look at a lot of the top players, you look at uh, Adam Scott, very wide takeaway, not very much wrist set at all. You look at Roy McIlroy, look at Tiger Woods. All these players are using a wide takeaway and not getting very much wrist set so that later in the swing, as we start down, we can increase this wrist set and we're really only going to max out this angle of lag for a split second in the downswing. Okay, so a three-step drill here. Now, as we get started with this, I want to remind you that the fulcrum in this golf club for getting a massive amount of lag is right at the end of the golf club. This is where I want my hinge point to be. I want to use the full length of this club to build lag and then release lag.